I just wanted to do a quick video, hopefully quick anyway, on welding a, a thin aluminum uh, tube. You know, I've jumped on YouTube and looked at some welder uh, sites and blogs and stuff, and most people don't really talk too much about this. They will talk about welding um, thin aluminum. Uh, usually, though, it's not tube. It certainly isn't small diameter. This is both um, a 3 8 OD with an 035 wall. Now, the wall looks bigger in this video because um, I had to cut it. You know, I cut it with a cutoff blade, and it's kind of mushed up here on the end, but it's actually a lot thinner than this video shows. Um, I'm sorry about the camera. The camera kind of stinks. Um, let's see if I can zoom in at all here. That's probably making it worse, but anyway. Uh, you know, I actually finally got a decent weld on here. Now, the camera doesn't do justice, but... Um, I've looked at some other YouTube videos and, you know, there's the tube right there. You, you know, you can, it's sitting next to a file just for comparison of size, right? Um, you know, 3 8 OD, thin walled stuff. And this is a butt weld, by the way, guys. Okay. Um, I have a, a Everlast 250EX TIG welder. I mean, that's what I'm using. Um, sorry if the light's kind of bad here, but you know that's what I got, and and you know it took me quite a while. I'm a pretty pretty new to TIG welding, so um, and yeah, wouldn't you know it? My first uh, welds that I had to do right away was thin walled aluminum. Uh, pretty tough stuff. A lot of frustrations, of course, no doubt. I'm sure everybody who's been TIG welding for a while understands that. Um, I did that for a little while. Went to stainless steel, and I gotta tell you, the stainless steel was like. Uh, it was gravy. It was easy. It was, you know, after doing aluminum, uh, I felt like I was just in a whole other world. Um, this is a really nasty weld. Look at that big, pulpous, nasty-looking weld right there. Uh, that's, this is aluminum in my hand. Same stuff, same tube. So you can see um, that's this nasty welds I started with. This is looking like that right there. Uh, but it's all a learning process, right? Anyway, um, this might be helpful to some guys uh, and girls too, for that matter, who weld. Uh, just some settings that work for me. I know not everybody uses. You know, there's different welders, different weld, welder manufacturers. Well, um, mine's an Everlast, as I said. But I'm just going to talk real quick here about what worked for me on this this thin weld stuff. Um, again, aluminum tube, uh, three eighths OD. Uh, about a 035 wall, maybe even 032 wall, somewhere in that area. Uh, what worked for me was about 17 amps, um, no upslope, no downslope. This is uh, pre post flow, we're both about two seconds. Obviously, we're in AC mode. Um, I used a uh, 2T mode instead of 4T, and uh, my welder's kind of messed up, so I'm forced to use a pedal right now instead of a uh, finger switch. Um, TIG, HF, high frequency, no strike, you know, not, not, uh, what, do, what do they call that? Sorry, guys. Um, not, uh, not lift, not TIG lift, but TIG HF, high frequency, I guess it stands for. Um, the balance was a 25%, which is your cleaning action. So fairly low cleaning action. And the frequency was about 100 hertz. Okay. Maybe somewhere between maybe 85 and like 105, but I think somewhere right around 100 hertz. Really worked well for me. Okay, a little bit. Here's the thing. Here's what I learned, and this is probably sound, going to sound really basic to other welders who've been doing this for a while. But something that really helped me out was understanding the the frequency and how important it is. Um, high frequency is going to give you a narrow arc, um, so you can get into really uh, tight areas. Uh, but for this uh, butt welding, the small aluminum tube, that did not work for me. Any little bit of gap between the, the end of the uh, two work pieces you, that you're butting together, boy, that, that arc does not want to stay in the middle. It's going to either hop to your right side piece, right, or it's going to hop to your left. It's, it's not going to go down the middle. You, know, you can butt these two up as good as you want, this small aluminum tube. But for me, the arc still wanted to jump around from side to side and not stay in the middle, okay? 
Uh, so by lowering the frequency, what I found out was that, at least this is how it worked out for me, was that the arc was a little bit uh, broader, a little bit wider, and it would heat up both sides of, a little bit more evenly. And even though the arc might still kind of jump around left to right, it jumped around less. And so I could do a little bit of um, a tiny amount of filler rod. I was, I'm using some thin stuff, some MIG wire, some O30 MIG wire for this. I just put a little dab of MIG wire on the right once I got the little um, the metal to kind of get shiny and you know and, and, and get molten. Uh, put a spot on the right and then a spot on the left and then just a little bit more in the middle and it would join right up most of the time really well. Um, because of my, my low skill level, um, you know, one of the techniques that worked for me is I'd, sw I'd swirl around in, in uh, clockwise or counterclockwise motion and it would really bring the, the, the two little um, uh, pools of um, a filler wire together and really fill in the, the, the gap down the middle. Um, as I get better, I'm sure I won't have to do that swirl technique and things will just get better as I dab and move along. But this is so small that it's hard to, to um, you know, uh, get your torch going, get your arc going, dab and move and dab and move because if the tube is so small, you got to stop and rotate it. So a lot of that going on. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. If you're struggling with um, thin walled, small aluminum tube, um, try about a 25% balance and somewhere between about 70 to maybe 75 to maybe 100 hertz. Uh, when I was when I first started, I was up around about 100 and um, maybe 130, 140 hertz, and it just was not working. I was really getting frustrated. Uh, too low of a hertz, and I noticed that I kind of blow through the tube. The end, you know, the end of the tube, I blow a hole through it. Uh, I, and some are, some of you guys may say, well, that's just your ampage, but it's ampage and frequency together and balance. Those three together really make a difference. So if you're blowing through the end of your tube and you got low amps and you're still smoking through the tube, there, there's some other factors there, you know, uh, like how long you stay on top of it and whether you're moving along and all that. But uh, try to lower your balance. Don't use too much cleaning action. Just enough to get the job done. And uh, lower your frequency down. Like, like I said, what worked for me is somewhere between about 75 and 100. Um, right around 100, I think. 90, maybe 100 hertz worked really well for me. Okay. So... Uh, Try that, and um, hope you have some luck. If you got any questions, um, by no means am I an expert, guys. I'm still way at the beginning of the learning curve on TIG welding. But if you got any questions of specific about this uh, small aluminum tube and, and how I got it done, and this is, this is a really good weld. I mean, it's, it's not you know a professional quality. It's not something I'm going to sell to a customer. That's for doggone sure. But I'm doing it for some private use, and it's it's strong. Um, you know, it, there's not going to be any corrosion, and it's not going to leak. So that that's the only thing I'm after. All right, so I'd love to hear some comments, guys, and, and thanks for watching the video. Bye.